Hey everyone, welcome to another exciting episode of the Scratch and Truck Podcast presented by the Dude and Grim Show. I am the Dude. And I am Grim, and I am very excited today to be talking about the self-titled debut album by The Violent Femmes. Ooh. Arguably yeah. one of the best debut records, I would say, ever. At least one of my favorites. Uh, I I called an audible on this one, dude. We weren't. Yeah. This wasn't on the oh. list for 2020, but we were hanging out the other weekend, and I I was flipping through the records, and I put it on, and I was like, my God, this is such an awesome album. We got to do it. But before we get into it. Like, like subscribe, and comment, comment below. I we want to remind everyone. <laughs> Two. Like, subscribe, and comment below. <laughs> Had to make that segue. Awesome. It was, dude, it was seamless. I, it, it really was. And you know, <laughs> I'm looking out for you, even if you're not looking out yeah. for you. <laughs> no, definitely not. Well, dude, I'm excited to talk about this album because this is the last Scratch a Track album, out of all time, of oh, 2020. No. So... It's pretty great, man. It's I, been a good I, it's what, been a, nine months, eight months, yeah, eight, eight months. months nine, I'm, who's counting? I mean, it's it's all a blur, anyways, at this point. But we want to thank all of you who have been with us from the beginning. Some of you here are and, new. We noticed we've new, had a yeah. bunch of subscribers here, and uh, you know, we hope we, we just want to let you know we have got some good shit in the cooker for 2021. Oh, like, we had our draft party be. a couple weeks ago. Um, can't, yeah, can't. We can just tease a few things. You know, the thing off. the thing about that was, dude, that kind of was nuts is we made the list and I'm like, man, this is a good list. And then as like, I'll go for a run and I'm listening to music and I'm like, fuck, dude, I really wanted to do this album. You know, and well, it's just, just going like, to have to wait. Yeah, just, just like with this album, there will be audibles throughout 2021. So I'm sure we'll have the opportunity yeah. to to make some adjustments. But let's get into the Violent Femmes Violent Femmes debut album, which is, dude, again, like you said, debut album. I mean, th- we talked about, we just recently did last week Pearl Jam's Vitalogy, which is their third album, but we talked about 10 and how uh, just an amazing debut album that yep. was. And and we've done a few of them. I mean, uh, oh, another one of our favorites, The Doors, The Doors yep. debut self titled album. Dude, and, Jimi Hendrix, uh, are you experienced in the experience? There's, Yes, there's there's a the U.S. version. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, but this is a great debut album, and I think maybe not a lot of people are obviously people. The the famous song everybody's going to know is "Blister in the Sun." Yeah, like that's yeah. that that's it. But there's a lot more to this album, and I'll I'll fully admit I needed to to um to listen to it a few more times before I really grew an appreciation for some of the other songs and everything. But dude, what was this? 1980, they recorded it in July of 82 and it was released in 83. Like I I just, I can't think of, I I mean, I've never really heard anything since either. That sounds like these guys and certainly not at that time. And I just, I I think that the beauty, it sounds so cheesy, but dude, the beauty is in the simplicity. Like a lot of the times, uh, it's not even a full drum set that's being played. Like a lot of times, uh, Victor De Lorenzo was just playing like snares with a brush, and that's what it maybe seemed like. A it's very, very simple, very stripped down. It's like acoustic punk, man. It's yeah. really, really interesting, dude. And dude, I gotta um, say, dude, Brian Ritchie is a monster on that acoustic bass. I mean, his dude, his bass lines, it reminds me in a way of like Primus, where because in Primus's instance, Les Claypool being such a awesome bass player that like it's almost like it switches roles. And sometimes the guitar just kind of keeps the rhythm and the bass is like carrying the melody. And I hear that a lot here. Now, granted, this predates Primus, but it just that's sure. that, that's kind of what it brings to mind, I guess, sometimes listening to it. Yeah, there are some songs, and we'll definitely when we get into the tracks. Um, the I, I've noted the bass is very prevalent in in some of these songs too, man. And um, you know, I it's interesting. These guys, they're from Milwaukee, which is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Which 
Um, uh, I believe it it's it's pronounced Miliwake. It's Algonquin for the good land, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, just checking. I just want to make sure we're on the same page there. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't want to have... I, I think some people who who listened to this band, I can see some people not liking them uh, primarily because of uh, uh, Gordon, Gordon Gano's voice. Uh, Gano's voice. And, and I, I just... I equate it a little bit, a very different type of music, but like kind of like Getty Lee from Rush. Oh, sure. Um, it's kind of polarizing. Yeah, it, it really stays like you haven't heard anything like it before. Um, and, and it gets a little funky and weird on a lot of the songs, even maybe more than Blister in the Sun, which a lot of people are going to know. But it's but so it's, expressive. It's it, it's so unique and original yep. that, yeah, I, I, I it's. And even I hearing, think a lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, too. and hearing him speak in an interview, like it's not one of those things where like somebody just kind of has this made up accent that they sing with. Like to hear him speak, it it sounds like him. You're right. It it doesn't sound like it's some contrived thing that he just sings this no. weird way, but then he speaks like Neil deGrasse Tyson, for example. I mean, it sounds like him to hear him speak. It does. It's, it it's like a real like honest him. voice. And again, wrote most of these songs when he was an 18 year old high schooler. So Dude, amazing that's... writing again for an 18 year old kid. And I think one thing that people relate to so much with this is I can't think of an album that captured that those feelings of teen angst more than this record. <laughs> it's Not, like a fucking it, John Hughes movie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 I don't think it it's really been is. done, and and it's Dude, like it's, uh, he articulates it really well, and it's like you can hear the emotion behind it, and like just just like the feelings of not fitting in, and I think that's probably why so many people discover this album in like high school and college, and, sure. and like really kind of relate to it because I first heard it um, in high school, and then it and then. You know, at different points in my life, it constantly got reintroduced, Comes and I've up. always liked it. And then, of course, you're at the record store, and you're like, um, fuck, yeah, I need that. <laughs> so, Well, it, I, I saw an interview with uh, with Brian Ritchie, and they were talking about the name of the band. And kind of like you said, with with in high school, you know, it, the, the album, the main themes are this album is about girls, girl crushes, and not fitting in in high school. Well, but in, the, in, the, in like almost yeah. kind of like depression and stuff, too. But yeah. I, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah ab- absolutely. It's like, you know. All the, those the, like the feelings. Themes. Like, yeah, yeah abs- absolutely. Um, and a girl but, getting kidnapped. It, it, and that, <laughs> but he says like like the, the name is really a contradiction because yeah. you know violent, but then but then femmes he said that at least at the time in in I guess in Milwaukee it was like basically about a guy who who can't do anything in sports and gets picked on is yeah. like what like, was like the the kind a of the femme. term you know femmes femmes mean, and so they just kind of put the words together and and, and like you it. have it so yeah so, um, but it was weird. Did you read how they got? discovered they were like yeah. just playing out on this street before a show like the wow, pretenders that's freaking weird before a pretender yeah, pretenders. show which were a big band at the time and yeah and i could see why they would relate to the pretenders because um especially they're in their first record they kind of have a little bit of a new wave kind of punkish different feel uh to it um for some reason, the song The Phone Call comes to mind, and I really like that song. But anyways, yeah, so they got discovered, and I, I had heard that uh, after they, they heard them, they actually invited them to do, like, a couple of acoustic An numbers. An opening set. Like, yeah. after the opener, they they got to do a couple little, which, could you imagine that? Like, you're on the street, well, and then you're like, yeah, well, thanks, guys. The Pretenders are up next, which, <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome. Yeah, dude. That it's it's pretty wild, man. It it, it really is. Um, I think even though uh, was it is it yeah. Um, I mean I don't know if you want to get into the tracks already or anything. I mean that's pretty much most of the background that I I kind of have on these guys. Um, there wasn't I didn't find too much about I guess the recording and the recording process or anything like that. I mean, um, yeah, there is there is a story a little bit, and I don't know if we want to wait for the to talk about it during the song. Or songs well, I that think kinda- that that it's the the story itself is more 
indicative of the whole thing. So the uh, album, sure. Yeah, so sure. they go so they it. go they they go in this studio, um, uh, Castle Studios in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, um, and <laughs> they record this album. And they're they're on a record label, but it's like Slash Records. It's it's probably like a subsidiary of a major label, so like an indie label, but like a subsidiary, right? So yeah. it's not like some huge deal. They're probably not. They're they're working with a producer who um, I, I have never heard of, which makes sense. Probably a local producer. They make this record, and it and it kind of blows up for them. And then years later, the studio goes out of business. And they put out an ad in the newspaper that basically says, we're going out of business. If you have master tapes at the studio, come get them or they're going in the fucking landfill by X date. And so, of course, That's crazy. they were probably on tour or like, you know, being or a, just didn't read the paper that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so. I mean, and so, dude, the master tapes are gone. So I, I think it and I think that came to kind of. Uh, the whole thing with Gross Point Blank. Yeah. So John did. Cusack insisted that, right, they they be in this movie with He's Blister in the Sun. And mm-hmm. I guess they re-recorded the song on two different instances for the movie. They tried to do one that was an actual, like, trying to be the original and do it over again. And I couldn't find this. I wanted to hear huh. it. Yeah, I haven't. I I would have to listen to. I'd have to watch the movie again because I swear, like the original version is. is actually in the Dude, movie. Dude, I listened to him back to back because I guess I I misunderstood what I was reading, and so I was like, oh, so they used the re-recording in the movie, but then you know this the the album that you buy is is the original. But right. I listened to him, and I'm like, God, that that is the same fucking recording, or they did it so goddamn good. Like you just, I mean, like every vocal inflection was there. And then I I wow. read later that they did actually, they just used the remastered cut in the movie. But then okay. they they also yeah. re-recorded that weird version that is that made the soundtrack with it's, like horns very, and yeah yeah. Well, let's just get into the track now because we're already talking about it, and it's the first track. Well, you want to do that? Yeah, but I, I will say the okay. the one thing um, that I didn't look at, and I wish we would have done it when we were looking at the Rolling Stone uh, 500 Greatest Albums, because this should be on that fucking list. Like, no Ooh. questions asked. It should be on that list. And if it's not, fuck you, Rolling it. Stone. I want to say it might be. I want to okay. say it might be. So maybe but. I retract that. But I'm going to look. And if it's not, I stand by what I said. Go fuck yourself. And I stand by my performance. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, moving in, uh, this was, I believe it was first released on vinyl and cassettes. Um, so I think we can talk about it in terms of, you know, sides and, and whatnot. But yeah, the the first track, probably the most well-known we've been talking about with Gross Point Blank is, is Blister in the Sun. And, you know, right off, I mean, dude, dude, that opening riff, man. It's just, it's absolutely so classic. Da- just so goddamn catchy. It is, yeah. it's, it's catchy. It has this kind of real upbeat feel. And I really like how they were talking about, um, you know, he played it when he played it for, uh, I guess, uh, uh, what's his name? Well, I, I guess the the other two members, but, you know, Victor uh, De Lorenzo was there and he just kind of played the riff. And then De Lorenzo was just like, did you? Did you? Like yeah. he just, he, he, he just picked up and, on it. Yeah, and it just it just stuck. So it's it's very cool. And I think my first probably exposure to this might have been watching Gross Point Blank. Is oh is really? Maybe where okay. I, where 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 it really stood out because I'd have to look up and see what year that movie was. But I remember seeing that movie pretty much when it when it first came yeah. out. And dude, man, that's the one I need to rewatch again. Like it's it has been it's been a hot minute. But during. I think it was during the one of the interviews I was watching. Uh, I think it was the one that you sent me. They just showed a couple of clips from the movie and outtakes, and I was like, "Wow, okay, I, I remember this, and I, I, I think I need to see it." There's some great actors. I mean, Alan yeah. Arkin's in it, and Dan Aykroyd's in it, and obviously John Cusack and stuff. So, if yeah. you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It's it's kind of fun. Um, but like you were talking about, dude, the alt version. Is very different, like it with is. the horns and everything, and it's got some. 
I think some slower, maybe quieter sections. Yeah. Although, although, although the uh, the version that's on the album, it does, you know, it gets real low and he's he's whispering and everything, and then boom, it just kind of hits at the end. So, yeah. Um, you know, yeah, I thought uh, I'd, it's a great song. It is. What do you got? Uh, nothing. I was just going to comment that if we were doing the covers face off, I think it would be funny because we'd be like, well, they certainly made it their own. <laughs> but well, you could. They kind of covered it again. Yeah. Kinda yeah. Like, uh, yeah, and I think during an interview, somebody was asking, they were like, oh, what's this song about? And I think, you know, somebody basically said they, that it's like about masturbation. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Makes, you know, yeah. Body and, body and beats, I stained my sheets. I yeah. don't even know why. It, it kind of reminds me, I don't know if you've ever seen that episode of The Office where Dwight and um, Michael are in a hotel room <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And they turn all the lights off with a black light, and they're like, they're like, oh, oh God, what, what, what is that? Yeah, because there's just the whole room like lights up, and he's like, oh, it's either blood, urine, or semen. And yeah. then Michael's like, oh God, I hope it's urine. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a pretty good episode yeah. too. Um, yeah. Anyways, maybe we but should move he, on to. Uh, <laughs> we should, but I think it's, it should be noted in the in the video I sent you, which I would give my. My hats off to Roy Harper, the professor of rock who who okay. made the YouTube video about Blister in the Sun. And Solid how cool is it that rock. he actually interviewed the Violent Femmes? Dude, yeah, that's because that's where cool. I found I out like about that. the whole bit with the master tapes and how they re-recorded it. So hats off yep. to him for for really digging into that and uh, and and making that video because I found it really cool. Um. Mm-hmm. So kiss yeah. off. Yeah. Oh, dude. Not piss off. Kiss off. I, I like it because Blister in the Sun has kind of this carefree, um, like it, it's, it sounds like a happy song. It doesn't, it, it doesn't sound sad, but it gets, no. it gets dark real quick with kiss off. Like it, like as soon as the riff comes in, um, I, I don't know. It, it's like the album takes a turn and I just, this is where it like it, it sounds like almost suicidal where he starts I take one, one, one for my family and two, you know. Yeah. It's seven it seven well, n- 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 no tomorrow. <laughs> well the one thing that I really like about it is and, and I think I kind of described it earlier as kind of like this acoustic punk. Yeah. Um but but the the background vocals are just so perfect and punky, yeah. man. It's just it's just so like it's it's exactly like if you if you had to I don't know like make a stereotype it's like oh well, that's it that's what you know punky background vocals should sound like, like yeah that, that's what it is for this song and you know what's um, what I love about it is it sounds kind of it has this like punk sound but nothing is distorted everything is clean but but they they still capture that in such a good way it's uh very different than uh raw power <laughs> yeah and it yeah. did not make the revised top 500 list so you can kiss my balls rolling stone thank god there kanye go. west is on there six times but violent femmes isn't Good and call. we should also say and and like neil young and the beatles and yeah. everybody's on there well, a lot yeah too. but true. i, I like I, I they're actually we, more legit Anybody who, who listens to this podcast, we know they know where your allegiances lie. I'm trying to reel it in here. I know and you're um, doing a good but, job. I just I get yeah. real pissed off about this. He does. He gets. Re- you should hear the conversations we have offline. Oh, oh yeah, thank it's, God. It's, fucking Harry Styles is on there too. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm done. Yeah. yeah okay. Please don't go, Grim. Uh, yeah. Please do not yeah. go. Sorry. Please do, please not, do go. not go. I, it's okay. kind of reggae. It gets almost kind of, re- you know, it, it gets that, I, which I like. And, and again, the bass carrying the melody like really heavily, you know, the bass is coming from the brain. Yeah. <laughs> While you do, uh, do, do, do. Well, yeah. And, and I did make a note. Yeah. The bass is, ve- this is one where it's it, very prevalent in this song. It even has like a solo in the middle too. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, so uh, it's, it's like super and, aggressive and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, you know, when I look at the lyrics and everything, it's it's it, it is one of those relatable kind of high school songs. Like the girl, you know, yeah. you have a crush. The girl you have a crush on, she never has the crush on you because yeah. of course, and she, she and she another. like another guy. <laughs> like you yeah, said. that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But man, you know, you can't get out of her out of your out of your head. And every time you see her, like in the in the hallway, like your heart skips a beat. And, yeah. yeah. 
Oh man. Yeah, and it's and then, like it's funny too because when you're young in high school, right, and the senior girls like they're like, man, those are like women, women, they're women, fucking kids, dude. It's weird. Young, <laughs> dumb, and yeah. full of yeah, fun. It's, yeah, fun. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Anyways, I'm trying to reel it in now. Oh, reel it in. But dude, okay, add it up. I I think it's the single best song uh, on the album, probably that they've ever I done. Know. I, I love this dude. I, I actually can't listen to this album without snapping back to it. Mm, interesting. I will always so, listen wow. to it a couple times. Uh, it is like the opposite of Scratch a Track. It's like, dude, it's I get fucking through it and I just have and, and, <laughs> yeah. I, and I have to go back. Yeah, yeah and track. I think that the record has enough space where you could put it on twice, theoretically. If one were so inclined. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Well, it's um. So I, I will say it's interesting. So it starts off the way the song starts off is is very unique. It's just mm-hmm. yeah, you know uh, him singing uh, solo right for for you know the first yeah. part of it, and then then the band comes in like really hard and fast. Yeah. Um, and it's a one thing, and and I don't want to piss you or or um or the uh, you know violent femme um kind of uh, super fans out there, but. I can't help when I listen to some of their songs and maybe it's just because the way he sings it, but I can't help to think about what it would sound like if Elmer Fudd sang them because (laughs) (laughs) dude, because dude, like some of them, like if you actually start like listening to them and looking at the words, I'm like, man, dude, Elmer Fudd, like just, just the way his voice is, is pretty great and part of me is like oh man i could totally see him singing like the opening lines and that's you know that's not i'm not taking a shot at him or anything that would be it's just funny. something that yeah. it's something that i you know it, it popped into my head when i was listening to him i don't really know why that's but, funny um yeah so and i think but this, this one, one did, it oh, jumps at you when he comes out with that why can't i get just one fuck like that drops like a why fucking glass just- breaking you know what i mean Absolutely, that's got Absolutely. something to do with luck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, you know, there's nothing I can say when I'm in your thighs. So yeah, uh, that's a pretty good uh, line. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I, I kind of look at this song as is at least at least from my perspective, especially when it's like added up. And I don't know if you you know had some different meaning, but it's kind of like you're dating this chick and you know, you want to hook up with her, you want to hook up with her. And she's kind of like, Oh, well we got to give it time. It's too soon. And it's almost like in 40 year old version, we're like, Oh, 40 dates or 20 dates or 30 dates. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, it's almost like she's like on a, on a count. And then she's like, Oh, well we got to add up the days to see, or the time to, yeah. to, to see if we've been together long enough before, before we can do it. Cause he just kind of comes across as like, dude, I, I, I just like, I need to get laid. Yeah. Like that's, that's well, kind of what I get. It's but. so weird because there's there's that point there's that bit of it but then there's this whole thing about oh my 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 mom have you kept your eye on your eye on your son i know you had problems you're not the only one and he talks about he goes downtown and he gets him a gun and don't shoot that thing at me and it that that's the part of it where i don't quite understand it because it kind of it kind of gets gets into like this weird territory that I don't know how it relates to the the first part other part yeah yeah I I don't know either but I I love it because you don't hear add it up until almost the end of the song but when it drops in the background vocals come in I just I just remember hearing this on the greatest hits before I ever had this album when I was younger and I was like that is a fucking cool ass song yeah well, I have a confession to make. The <laughs> next song is Confessions. So, yeah. dude, I, I love the intro to this song. It has a really dark feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to know what it really reminds me of is the song um, uh, Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down by Nancy Sinatra, which is in the Kill Bill movie. Bang Bang, My Baby. Oh. Don't you remember that? I, yeah, I, so, not offhand, but... I. I'm gonna take your word for it's, it. It's 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 the guitar part. Okay, and okay, and, and 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 so and you know we have discussed Nancy Sinatra on this channel before, uh, most covers notably face off. with uh, the covers face off. These bo- uh, boots were made for walking. Um, and in case you missed it, and judging by the view count, you did. Um, <laughs> you know we'll, we'll just 
put a put a link below so that way you have easy access to that. But still uh, think but, you got more than Crawling King Snake. Just throwing oh, it out there. But what hasn't? So um again, this is another Elmer Fudd song. I really think he could have crushed it. I do. Yeah. <laughs> um you know. But I you know, with 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 kind of the lyrics and and everything, um, you know, to me it's like it sounds like He's lonely and he's pissed about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of kind of the kind of the theme I'm I'm gathering and here. And I like how um, he kind of puts in like those the like those stutters almost at times. I'm so low, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, and I, I think the way he sings it um, is I will say like his um, his his voice his vocals are very um, you know. You got to take them for what they are. Not everybody's going to be into that. So yeah, sure. I think the way the way he sings this song and kind of sings it at the end, I think could turn some listeners off. Um, I'm fine with it, but I, I can see some people being like, yeah, I, it's, I, I can't do it. I oh, when he know. gets into the we got to smash it apart. Yeah, yeah. He, he I mean, he really, yeah, yeah. yeah, he he really kind of goes off. He does. Yeah. It's it's this free form kind of jazz odyssey from a vocal perspective. But yeah, so um, flip the Edgram, record. I think I flip it. We'll flip you. Flip you for real. Um, prove my love. Start the second side. Yeah, I like it. It's kind of got more of the the carefree remnants of like your blister in the sun, right? I, I think so, anyways. Sure. And um, for some reason, because it reminds me of um, the lyrics are like a throwback to Henry the Eighth. But instead of second verse, same as the first, I like how he throws in the third verse, same as the first. Just last night, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, the, I think the song, the lyrics are pretty self-explanatory, especially with the title, like Prove My Love. But basically, he's just singing about all the things he does or that he'll do to to kind of prove my prove love his, to you. Prove, yeah. prove my love to yeah. you. So well, at least he found someone. So. But did he? Because Promise, uh, track number seven, kind of seems like maybe mm. not. I don't know. Yep. Um, yeah, you know, and I, you know, I kind of, I really like the opening of the song, and and definitely um, the the way he sings it. But um, also, like it, one thing about them is. You know, he in this one he kind of he he carries melody at parts where I can't say he's always consistent about sort of carrying melody um, or at least at least the way his voice is in a sense it doesn't always maybe come across like that yeah you know, sure having this 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 flowing melody so that's the promise I promise yeah give me some sign of pursuit I promise um what uh what do you got Graham. What's next? To the Kill, isn't Ooh. it? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. So, To the Kill is weird because I I feel like lyrically it's I maybe it kind of deals with loneliness, but it doesn't necessarily talk Yeah, it does deal a lot with loneliness, I guess, mm. but it doesn't necessarily talk <laughs> about a a girl or anything, but I, it's weird that he makes the reference to Al Capone several well, times. Yeah, in I song. mean yeah, I mean, well, I mean, the song about, you know, it about being loneliness certainly isn't a stretch for this album. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, I'll give you that. but I, well, I mean, it does talk about, um, I, I don't know if about someone's, uh, a girl specific, I imagine it is a girl, you know, his lady oh, took advantage yeah. of him, that took his money, took my you know, money, and she went to and Chicago. Went to Sh- Chicago. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, hate, I hate it when that happens. It's the worst. <laughs> um, I like the know, way he, he says Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, from Milwaukee to Chicago is not that far. It's a couple hours. No, ride. it's like an it's, hour, it's, it's, isn't yeah, it? Pretty close. Yeah, uh, I forget. I forget. It did traffic, you know, it's tough. Um, but, um, but yeah. So, anyways, it's yeah, it's just kind of about that. Um, but then this is this is again is is another one of those songs where the bass really stands out. It's very yes. very very yep. prevalent. But but also throughout it, there's parts of the song where. The song seems to kind of fall apart instrumentally yeah. Yeah. and then kind of comes back together in a weird way. But I'm I not think, sure how to feel Yeah, I feel, feel like about it's it. intentional because they obviously can oh, play. But yeah. Uh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 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 And you know the other part I really like? I Because his lyrics. And I love how expressive God, he is. God, but God. where he's like, go ahead. <laughs> 
to the kid. So funny, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I like so that. funny. Um, He's silly. Well, let, let's move on. This is this next song is definitely one of my favorites on the album. That's Gone Daddy Gone. I just, I'm going to say it'll probably be on the Ooh. cover's face off at some point because Gnarls Barkley did a pretty sweet ass cover. cover of this. I, and I know, believe and that it was, was interesting. on St. Elsewhere, wasn't it? It was their de- yeah. their debut album. Yes. So oh, I don't know if debut. that's on our list, but but it should be on our list. Dude, the the thing that stands out to me in this song uh Marimba's? the most is the xy- oh, xylophone. I thought it was the xylophone, yeah. but yeah, yeah. Um it to me that just makes the song and adds such yep. such a different sound and texture that we haven't heard throughout the whole album. I kind of kind of wish, you know, maybe I, you know, heard it more. And again, I'm not as familiar with uh the Violent Femmes work after this i'm curious and maybe some people out there know if you know it's a, kind of an instrument that they bring back in some of their 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 you know uh, preceding albums because i would be curious man i like well, the way I've, they use it in this song so much so i wish i could tie like i've listened to at least the other ones from the 80s but not like this one i know they do do some other things like one song that comes to mind is the country death song from their second album and he plays gordon gano's playing banjo on that i believe um yeah so they they do do other things but i'm glad he said that because aside from that i mean i think there's only like electric guitar even in a handful of songs a few songs yep yeah and and that's kind of what's cool is is like they have like such a consistent sound but now, granted, if every album they ever did sounded exactly like this one, maybe you'd kind of be like, all right, well, maybe it's something. But for this album, I, I love the consistency and the simplicity of it. And I think it, it's kind of cool because, like you said, when another instrument comes in, like it, it's right there and you notice it. it. It's it stands out for sure. It stands out for sure. Uh, I was trying to think of that <laughs> the simplicity line from Lebowski and I couldn't fully grasp it. <laughs> Uh, it's a good one but uh yeah so this song uh, definitely one of my favorites on the album i think it's is it i'm trying to see it's been yeah it was a cover it's i think we're actually where it really stood out that i heard a one because if i'm not if i'm not mistaken it's credited as both gano and willie dixon so yeah they they did I think borrow some lyrics um, yeah. from Willie Dixon's uh, I Just Want to Make Love to You, uh, originally recorded by Muddy Waters. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes it's referred to as Gone Daddy Gone slash I Just Want to Make Love to You. Yeah. Just, just throwing that in there. Probably right. probably I can tell by the way that you switch your walk. and yeah, Exactly. Okay. So now we're going to go to song 10, which... Technically, is the last song on the album when it when it was released. Um, that is correct. When they re-released now, it on CD, on they CD, added a few more. Ugly and give me the car. So, now, did you I, listen I think, to those, dude? I did. I, I know did. those songs, um, and and I want to touch on them briefly. But well, not in yeah, contention well, I, for scratches, in my opinion. Well, it, and again, it's it's one of those things that I I didn't own it on 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 vinyl or cassette so when i've heard this album that's what it's you've just heard. Al- it's just always had those songs on there so i kind of just thought it was a part of the album um mm-hmm. but but i think for our purposes today we're just going to go yeah. one through ten um so to me good feeling is a great way to kind of wrap up the album it's a slow kind of somber number and it's happy um, it, it is it's like, it's like dude it's 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 a happy love song and um you know and uh just about being with someone and wanting basically wanting them to stay longer and be with you longer and mm-hmm. you know i mean when when you want that from your partner that is a good thing right yeah you know there are times where you're kind of like oh, i got i got to go to brunch um <laughs> now that you know. for the listening audience i've had this conversation yeah. with my wife a lot of times and i think it's funny cuz i'm like brunch is a luxury that is afforded to single adults who live in the city. (laughs) Because if you got a kid, man, fucking brunch is out, dude. I'm telling you, fucking brunch is not happening. Well, that's why I don't have any kids that I know of. (laughs) Yeah. Moving on. No. Uh, But yeah, this is a great way to uh, wrap up the album. uh, To wrap it up. Um... 
But uh, yeah, what do you think? You, I mean, is this a good one for you, Grim? Is does this leave you with a good feeling to end the album? Yeah. And and again, they're bringing in another instrument subtly, but it's the only time you hear piano on the album. I'm quite sure. Oh yeah, I think you might be. And, right. and it is subtle, but it's it's well placed, right? Um. Yes. Yeah. Now I want to touch briefly on the two that were added, uh, for the CD oh, release. Two for you, because one, one won't do. do. Ugly and give me the car. So to me, ugly is kind of just more like a punk ish feeling kind of song yeah i like it man i dig it i it's, do it's, too it has, has an up, up upbeat feel to it i like the background yeah. harmonies and stuff like it's it's cool i like it yeah i do have to say i i feel that now granted i think they recorded these if i'm not mistaken after the rest of the album because everything was recorded in that um in that wisconsin studio but then it says for tracks 11 and 12 that they recorded this at Music Works Studios in London. Oh, wow. I'm going yeah, to it's... assume that's not London, Ontario. Just an assumption. Not. But anyways, yeah. so they did these like probably after the fact when they were on tour or something, right? Would be my sense. guess. Yeah. Because they didn't make the next album. They were in the area and needed to use the John. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, dude, I really, I think though, with the, with all the teen angst and everything, they both would have fit in on this album had they, had they been originally recorded with it. But, dude. Oh, yeah. Come on, Dad. Give me the car. I love how it's, I got this girl. I want a bear. <laughs> it's so awesome. It's so good. And it, yeah, it, I mean, yeah, it makes sense, right? It's not very, it's, it's not very subtle. Like, no, it, you know, it's um, yeah. Just don't leave your head yeah. in there afterward. Yeah. Or the rapper. Well, that's what uh, I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever. Uh, um, so anyways, yeah, I mean, dude, you know, it's great. This album really brought out the high school like perverts yeah. in us, I think. And, you know, you need this type of stuff in life to remember like where you came from pretty much and, and how are, dignified so. and civilized you are now for god's yeah. sakes dude i have come such a long way it's amazing with a you yeah dude <laughs> you two utes Utes. Yep. um all right i think i'm on the t Graham. you are on the t dude so all right uh, well, I, and I'm I'm curious if we're going to go to the OT zone because I I kind of think it's very very possible. So I am going to um go with to the kill. Um and I I say that because um like we talked about the song and I do like that, you know, they kind of bring it back together, but instrumentally the song I think purposely intentionally kind of falls apart. And then it kind of comes back together, but it's just not, it doesn't, I don't like the flow. I, I think that's, that's probably the big thing, um, with this song. And I know obviously with, you know, the punk and the rock and everything, it doesn't always have to be smooth sailing, but, but it just gets a little too far afield for me. I think a little too far afield. So I had to go with to the kill. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's that probably would have been mine. I mean, not that I don't like the song, but I could easily go from Promise right into Gone Daddy Gone. Yeah, well, and I think just talking about or with that song, I mean, you know, we could also talk about potentially. Well, I mean, again, maybe the the songs weren't recorded, but putting Ugly or Give Me the Car in its place, I would be okay with that as well. Dude, you give know? me the fucking Give Me the Car, man. Yeah. Give me the car. Hand me the and, keys, you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Hand me yeah. the keys, you keys. Uh. Okay, so with that said, honorable mention or honorable scratch or the honorable, honorable Judge S Wapner. I don't know. How do you want? <laughs> uh, I would probably go with Promise. Okay. Just because, All right, good. Just be. Because to be honest, uh, when I was going through it and looking at my notes, my notes are actually fairly bare on that one. Uh, as some listeners may 
you know, if you made it this far, may have noticed because we didn't really talk about that one a whole lot. So I'm guessing the last time I really listened to it, uh, not a whole lot stood out. Okay. I'm going to go confessions. The rest of the songs. Okay. Mm. What do you, what do you got there, dude? What are you, what are you having? This is a spiked so melt, uh, craft hard sites, seltzer. Hmm. All right. No artificial, no artificial ingredients. That's great. That's great. I will not bow. To, I will not bow to any sponsor. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I think we're wrapping it up, literally and figuratively. Yeah. Here, Grim. Confessions um, is is the longest song on the album, and I feel like it could really be cut down. Cut it. And actually, dude. Yeah. Like I said, just put add it up fucking twice. Because that song is so awesome, and you're good. I like what you've done here. Yeah, absolutely, you could do that. Um, so I think you know if some people may have uh, you know overlooked this album, or at least maybe you're just familiar with Blister yeah. in the Sun. But we both highly recommend giving it a, a few listens, and uh, you know maybe there's some songs that that really catch your ear. Because I know a lot of people are a big fan of Blister in the Sun, but they're more than just like a one song oh, yeah. band. Uh, yeah. So just. Keep now, let mind. me ask this kind of just a little 2020 wrap up and we're not like pushing the boundaries of the limitations of time here. Um, was this the only audible that was called in 2020 for an album for an album? Mm. I know we kind of did some side episode audibles to kind of pair things and keep a good flow going. I I think you threw a couple of audibles. I think Plastic Beach might have actually been an audible. Oh, I think it might have been two. Yeah. Oh, and I think uh, Fiona Apple's Fetch the Bolt Cutters oh, was an audible yeah. as well. So was Deanne, so. wasn't it? I think so. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Deanne was okay. an audible. So, so this isn't the only audible. No. But it's the last it's one. It's the last one. It's the and last to me, one. That's, this is the last. Sign, that's a sign of a really good album. Like, I listened to it and I was like, we have to talk about this now. Or in three weeks, but now, you know, <laughs> not then, not <laughs> yeah. now, now. Yeah. What you're looking at, what you're looking at is now. Well, when, yeah, back then, no, <laughs> I, I, I can't remember it, but it's a really good exchange. Yeah, and they tell um, two friends and they, yeah. Oh, uh, and so on. Okay. So that's well, what we're hoping for with the podcast. You know, you tell two fair. friends and they tell two friends and so on. So hit the like and subscribe if you would. Like, like subscribe and comment below. You Please. won't regret it. I mean, I mean, like, really, like, how hard is it? It's like right there. Just do it. Like, yeah. subscribe, and comment yeah. below. It yeah. doesn't mean you have to. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. just fucking hit it. It's all about the algorithm. Please, okay? please. That's it. Hit it and quit it. It's and fine. Rolling we, Stone, we... dude, put this fucking album on the list. Give me a goddamn yeah. break. Exactly. You know. But if you want to sponsor us in the new year, or uh, <laughs> you know, have us, <laughs> we're totally open to that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you do is. have a lot of good albums on the 500, just at this yeah. one. Yeah. And Joni Mitchell's Blue shouldn't be number two. Sorry. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay. Well, before we lose more fans, I think we should wrap it up for the year, Grim. It's been a pleasure. I can't wait to start 2021 with some some good ones. We got some good ones coming. So yeah, I man, I'm looking at the list right now, and I'm. I think I'm going to need don't. a change in clothes, dude. I was going to say, don't stand <laughs> up. All right, everyone. We've gotten very perverted on this this scratch. We hope How you liked you it. Apologies if you're offended. Sorry, not sorry. Until yeah. the new year, everyone. Happy New Year. Be safe. It's time to go. The Dude and Grim Show. Signing out for 2020. Peace. Scratcher Track is produced by the Dude and Grim. Additional music provided by Moore. That's dot 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 M O R E in the Tins. T I M N Z. Copyright 2020. The Dude and Grim Show. Well, I think I'm going away.